esteemed head of nation, prime minister, uh, supreme justice, fellow parliamentarians and ministers. As chair of parliament of Ascardia, when it comes to action, I don't usually want to do the talking. This is because as chair of parliament, my mission is to get results rather than simply talk about results. But for the next minutes, it's the other way around. In the United Kingdom, I used to be an active member of a party called the Liberal Democrats. It was once a very successful party until about 1922. Uh, the last 97 years have been less successful. Uh, but that's a story for another time. The Liberal Prime Minister of that time, David Lloyd George, he used to say, the finest eloquence is that which gets things done. He's right. For me, the role I hold is all about getting things done. Not just discussing what needs to be done and waiting for someone else to fix everything. In this short address, I will summarize the key achievements of Parliament since our last Executive Congress. I'll share the main challenges facing Parliament today, and I will look forward to the action we need to take in the next six months to achieve the results which we have to achieve. I'm happy to report, by the way, this is a story of great progress. And in truth, a story which shows we are ready to take the next great step in Ascardia's parliamentary history, the activation of our economy. Now, Parliament has become visibly more effective since the previous Executive Congress in Vienna. When we first began the job of parliamentary activity, we started from nothing apart from goodwill, many great people, and a huge investment of time and money from our head of nation. Look how far we've come. In the last seven months, we have held over 30 Zoom uh, virtual meetings. Uh, we've become the most experienced digital democracy in human history. Now think about that. We've achieved what nobody else has ever achieved, a genuinely functional parliamentary system that makes decisions and gets things done. We've also held the world's first 100% digital sitting of any parliament ever in the history of the human race. And it worked well. You have created the etiquette for these sittings, and no one has developed it before. This will make it quite a challenge for new MPs when they eventually join us and get involved. It will be our responsibility to make that transition to digital democracy smooth for newcomers. The head of nation suggested a less formal type of parliamentary sitting, a one-day sitting with no votes. We tried that too. I think it worked really well. And it helped us to discuss important matters without the formality. We'll have more of those in the years to, in the years to come. Perhaps our greatest achievement is this event here in Tallinn. Despite all those who predicted or even wanted us to fail over the last 18 months, we're still here. And I think I can say on behalf of all of us that so far the events team, led by our events manager and the others, have done a tremendous job to show that we can do physically what we also do digitally. Most of you have only met one time before physically, probably in Vienna. But when we met here again in Tallinn, this was instantly a meeting of minds and a meeting of friends as well, I'd suggest, because we have learned how to carry friendship across the circumference of the earth and make it real. Sometimes journalists ask me if I think Ascardia can work or if it's just a dream someone called Dr. Asher Bailey had. Well, I say, Yes, to both it is a dream and it can work. They never ask if we know each other. They never ask how it can have happened that over a hundred people from the continents of the world seem to have formed a genuine community where we do work instead of just talking about it. This is not an invisible achievement. It's really an achievement in plain sight. 
The brilliant science fiction writer and Arthur C. Clarke, who I was honored to know, once said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. We have created a kind of magic so persuasive that those who doubt us cannot even see this achievement. This is a great and glorious contribution to human society, and it was created by Ascardia thanks to those in this room and thanks to the vision of one man. And I think we have the right to be proud to be here because of the founder, Dr. Asher Bailey. <laughs> Amongst those who I've got to know best in the last six months, it's always dangerous to make lists. I must credit some specific individuals, though to do so does carry with it the possibility of creating competition. I think our head of nation appreciates competition, so here goes. The chairs of committees are the gang masters of Ascardia. You are responsible for keeping the engines running, for generating the legislation that all of this is based on. I thank the chairs, past and present, for what you do. Some have a huge responsibility to achieve results across all areas. Our chair of justice, for example, Dr. Salvas Muzakitis, has to judge all of what you send to him for consideration. He's shown the ability to mix honest feedback with a, a gentleness of touch, which means it's actually hard to realize that what he's actually telling you sometimes is that what you've sent him is rubbish. <laughs> Such diplomacy is rare in a lawyer. He'll go far, let's hope one day, <laughs> into space, as a reward, not as a punishment. The Science, Trade and Commerce and Finance Committees have all done a good job of focusing together on areas of common interest, and I've noticed that the strategic imperative of getting the work done has caused very valuable alliances. This is absolutely vital given the need for our economic development. I'll come back to that. Information and communications and citizenship have found a strong alliance partly because of the outstanding relationship between the two chairs, former chair Ben Dell and current chair of information and communications, Dennis Shoemaker. Manufacturing and equity and resources have discovered a similar professional alliance. Both are central to the future of our industrial and construction ambitions. Youth and education has been somewhat less active. This is because there's a time and a place when different committees have their space to shine. I think we do need to progress in this area with some outstanding work being done in relation to the concept of a college of Ascardia. This is both economically and educationally central. It's crucial, as well as being an excellently thought out, our idea. And along the way, I've also made some other really significant discoveries. For instance, I've discovered that the Seychelles presents a serious proposition for a bilateral, a bilateral agreement, as does Estonia. Most large cities in the world are now populated by enough Ascardians to make a local meeting possible, productive and newsworthy. And I discovered that when I went down to Cape Town in South Africa, where uh, my friend and colleague Ben Dell did a great job. While I was there, I also discovered that there are no bath plugs in Cape Town. So if you do, do go to visit Bendel, wash before you leave. <laughs> I feel honored to be working closely with tremendous people in parliament and in government. Our prime minister, the right honorable Anna Mercedes Diaz, is a strong, crystal clear thinker who has generated a government and an agenda that excellently complements the work of parliament. She also acts as a fantastic balance when, and I admit it, and one of my flights of fancy, you've all heard me do this. It means that we're grounded when we need to be, and we fly when we need to fly. And I pay tribute to her steady, steadfast, and absolute commitment to having a fantastic government. Thank you, Prime Minister. <laughs> Bendel was elected by you to be the Deputy Chair of Parliament. He has been doing outstanding work, particularly in the difficult task of helping us ignite the fire which will heat up our economy. 
And Cheryl Gallagher has, through sheer force of will and ingenuity, accessed parts of the United Nations that others simply couldn't reach. I've also had the honor to work with ministers and to see the growing relationships between them and the chairs of committees. These really form the axis for action in each of our 12 key areas of activity. Well done to them, including Minister Phil Appleby, who helped me in the struggle for Estonia's independence 30 years ago. He did some tremendous work here. We were followed by the KGB as a result. Phil Appleby himself is like a credit card debt. Once you have one, you just never seem to be able to get away from it. <laughs> Challenges for us now are all about sustainable growth. And let's talk about those challenges. I know that some committee chairs feel we can improve the quality of some of the interactions between parliamentary chairs and ministers. Some feel a little frustrated that there's not more open interaction. I can understand that. I think we do need to look at that and consider if there's a better way of doing so. And I'll be raising the feedback as recently as from this morning with the Prime Minister on our weekly regular meetings. I also know that there's a variation in output between committees. And in future, we'll probably grade the committees between A and C. If you want to know your committee's grading now, ask me afterwards, and I'm happy to share it. It is, I think, understandable that some of the committees have been more active than others. I fully expect culture, foreign affairs, and safety and security to become truly proactive under their new committee chairs, Cheryl Gallagher, Michael Chirino, and Ben Dell. Citizenship will go from strength to strength with Ariadne Gallardo in charge, and she also happens to be one of the nicest people in Parliament. Well done to your promotion, Ariadne. Reaching out to newest guardians is the continuing key challenge. We're underperforming versus what we need to do on this. The head of nation knows this. The prime minister knows this. I know this. You know this too. I would like to evolve our own self-image in Parliament to reflect the need for all of us to act as our own ambassadors. We are the people with the knowledge and motivation to do this. I'm also considering the benefits of a speaking tour to help you do that. We need to improve our lawmaking process. I've been involved with lawmaking for 30 years. It's tough, it takes time. The head of nation has rightly said, it's more important to get it right than to get it fast. This is another key area I'll be working with. Looking ahead, the time has come for us to get Ascardia's economy to operate effectively. We have to make the money to afford to do what we need to do, and that includes salaries as well. We've already seen the work done by Ben Dell, uh, and that's a tremendous start. There's no more important goal than this. We have a collective responsibility to make that happen, and we will achieve it. This Congress, this entire physical sitting, is happening in a building named after my grandfather. Ernst Julius Epic. He was a pioneer of astronomy, a true visionary far ahead of his time. He could see things others couldn't. He discovered astronomical phenomena which couldn't even be seen, including the Oort Epic cloud, which is a collection of billions of comets and asteroids that encircle the whole of our solar system. A representation of that cloud hangs in the lobby of this very building. And the portrait of my grandfather hangs on the wall of the room in the nation, head of nation state rooms here. It's my view that it's very right that one astron astronomical visionary watches over another, namely the founder and sponsor of all we do in our young parliament and our young nation. I've done many things in my life, as anyone who has been unwise enough to check me out on internet will know. But one thing which has not been crazy in my life has been my involvement with Ascardia. Others ask questions. Some ask if it can be as successful as we want it to be. To that I answer, it will be as successful as we choose to make it. Like my grandfather, our head of nation has a vision. It's our responsibility to turn that vision into reality for Ascardians and actually for all life on a pale blue dot hanging in the sky. For giving me, for giving us all the opportunity to create a stellar legacy for all mankind. Head of Nation, we are already forever in your debt. Thank you.